Okay, I bungled around for long enough. Thanks for showing up again, Fuzz. Uh, quick question, how's the audio? Because I have no idea how this sounds on Twitch since I'm streaming desktop audio and I don't want that feedback loop. on that I'm gonna go heal cuz I forgot to <laughs> in fact even did I I did get the Queen's dinner back the little trophy up there and the nail here oh god there I go all of our little trophies! Our house is a home. Chompy. Yeah, like, how's the audio fuzz? Do I need to turn anything up? Turn anything down? Turn me up or down? just in case. Because I know my recording audio should be fine and I can always just upload it later. Well, I suppose we should get to the main event, huh? It's books! Got a whole 20 books and I've got a whole thing of water to go through. From our lifespan to the day of reckoning. Fingers crossed I can be heard. Let's go. Before the day of awakening, they say we used to live very little. Only a few days or moons. And most of that time we were helpless larvae. Marriage marked the end of life. It's inconceivable nowadays. For one, we don't even remember being larva. Truly, becoming an adult is like being born, and then we get to enjoy this beautiful land for many years. It's hard not to pity our ancestors who would give up life so soon after becoming aware of it. The crowning of Elizant II. After tears were shed over Elizant's too sudden retirement, it was time to crown the new queen. Eliza II's speech radiated power over kindness, leaving many uneasy. Although everyone cheered, doubt and fear festered among the populace. They could only wait and pray their new queen would be just. Ladybug Exile It had been just one moon after Queen Eliza II took the throne. Farmer ants kept reporting the disappearance of many aphid eggs. After a thorough investigation, a band of 17 ladybugs were found to be the culprits. Yes, 17! 
Her Majesty acted quick and restricted entry of most ladybugs from the Ant Kingdom. As of the time this book was written, many special, special, special permits are required for them to visit. The move was seen as very controversial and has been the Queen's most criticized decision. It remains to be seen how our generations will handle the shifts caused by this event. Lesser Bugs After the Day of Awakening, many bugs changed form. We evolved to be able to live as we do now. But not all bugs evolved. Some remained untouched by the Awakening. We call them Lesser Bugs. Spiders, midges, weevils, and some others did not gain sentience. They remained unchanged. The causes for that are still being researched, but unless another Day of Awakening happens, it will be difficult to study the changes. However, it's been concluded lesser bugs have become more ferocious and will attack bugs that come near them. The Everlasting Sapling It is said that the sapling was a creation of the roaches. The legends of the saplings have brought the first settlers to Begaria, bringing upon the creation of the Ant Kingdom. According to legends, it is said that eating even one of its leaves will grant immortality to the bug that eats it. Our only clue to its whereabouts are artifacts mentioned in ancient texts. They say one resides in Snake Mouth Den, but its dangers have proven too much to conquer. Was it truly made by the roaches? Could it have caused the roaches to vanish? I hope this chapter of history will be cleared up in my lifetime. Snake Mouth Den Rumors say that during Elizabeth the First's rule, roaches that lived in Snake Mouth Den were faced with a sudden demise. In one night, all the roaches that lived there were gone, and fungi monsters appeared. Expeditions sent have always suffered losses, so the search for the reason was put on hold. Snake Mouth Den is rumored to be a host to many ancient crystals. Could that be the cause? A Brief History of Bees The bees are close allies with the ants, and came in shortly after Eliza I settled down in these lands. While they used to make honey themselves, technological advancements made robotic drones slowly take over the honey's production. Many bees of the newer generation, barring scholars, do not fully understand how to make it. Their society is mostly composed of females, with males residing in the queen's chambers. A Brief History of Wasps Although they've been around long before Eliza the First's arrival, the wasps live just outside of Bagaria. Thus, the ants hold the title of first settlers. They control most of the northern territory, composing of the far grasslands and wild swamplands, and will attack anyone they catch intruding. Due to a history of internal conflict, even the young are well versed in military <clears throat> sorry, military tactics and combat. A brief history of termites. The termites, like the wasps, lived in these lands before Eliza the First, and like them, lived just outside of Bagaria. In isolationist society, they say the termites were close allies of the roaches and as such possess advanced technology within their dome. Unlike bees and ants, the termites possess both male and female soldiers and workers in their society. They are also very good builders and know how to use clay well. A brief nope. The roaches. The roaches are the oldest of the bugs that arose after what they call the Day of Awakening. Having mastered the art of crystals, their civilization rose on top of this abundant power source. However, they suddenly disappeared. Many have speculated on the reason. Popular sentiment is that some sort of civil war must have led their civilization to crumble. Personally, I doubt it. Surely some would have remained then. If some roaches did survive, they live far from Bagaria. Perhaps not even they would know of what their ancestors did. Is this faster? No, not even close. The Lost Art of Flight History tells of insects soaring the sky, covering great distances. Nowadays, only the bees, wasps, and a few lesser species seem to retain that privilege. Even so, most bugs continue to possess wings. Day-to-day -day life doesn't quite need flight, so perhaps we as a collective have evolved past it. Could it be that one day bees will not flap their wings any longer? That's a little faster. Mantid claws? A 
According to data found in ancient roach slabs, mantises used to have claws instead of hands before the Day of Awakening. What a weird way to live. How would they be able to hold stuff to make art, or even cook nowadays? Thinking about it, this might be why they have an affinity for sharp tools. Fascinating. Some lesser mantids and mimics still have claws instead of hands. Such a pity. The Ancient Crystals Many crystals exist around the world, filled with a mysterious power. The old roaches learned how to harness their magic, and crystals are now used as power sources for many machinery and other things. No current side effects from crystal exposure are known, making them relatively safe. Some children's tales mention that sometimes sounds can be heard from them if in a quiet place, in a quiet enough place. Probably fake. Archaeologists say these crystals appeared at the same time the Day of Awakening started, suggesting a link between them and that event. Family Structures in Social Bugs Bugs can be classified into two types, social and loners. Social bugs usually have a single queen, the mother of the colony. Although all individuals are siblings, they do not tend to see it that way. Some individuals grow closer to others by choice, creating their own small family cell. Social bugs are separated into workers or civilians. Workers are born to protect and take care of running the colony. Workers take their job very seriously and will fulfill their duties the best they can. Recently, some workers have rebelled to lead a loner life. This too could be an evolution? Civilians form family bonds more easily and care for the general well-being of their colony. It should be noted that social bugs referring to their queen as mother is considered a taboo. The queen, however, has freedom to call others their children. Bulgarian Honey Something about the pollen collected from Bulgarian flowers causes the honey produced here to be super sweet, but also super volatile. If the honey is mixed too thick or heated up too much, it becomes alive and turns into a being called an Obama honey. Scientists are still trying to figure out what causes the honey to turn into these beasts. Many tests point towards crystal fragments in the plants of Bagaria being the culprit, but there's no conclusive proof. Berries as currency. It is unknown how long bugs have been using these specific types of berries as currency, but it is a very effective method. Hard, long-lasting, and very bitter, these berries are almost never eaten for their horrible taste. Their small size is perfect for carrying them around, too. There have been recorded cases of some bugs actually enjoying eating these berries, but almost no one can stomach the taste. Dark Cherries There are some rare berries in Bulgar Bulgaria that are worth a lot. A lot! We call them Dark Cherries. A red counterpart has... Uh, a red counterpart has been found in the eastern lands, but due to how common they are, they aren't as sought after. The dark variants strangely seem to only grow underground. Meanwhile, the red ones grow in tall trees. In any case, some bugs have a keen sense of smell for dark cherries. They're hired to find them so that they may be sold to collectors. The Era of Deceit After the Day of Awakening, not all bugs stood equal in society. Many ants, bees, wasps, and others failed to evolve with the rest. Many long disputes and frustration occurred because of this. Thankfully, with the passing of time, all bugs experienced the awakening. Youngling Care since the Day of Awakening, we mature faster, but our infant stage is still critical. There can be events where the caterpillar or grub stages get interrupted, causing unforeseen consequences. If one is not careful, the youngling can turn into a dangerous lesser bug. Nurseries must be protected and treasured at all costs so that our future generations don't suffer such a fate. A Study of Magic Magic is uncommon, and few bugs are able to use it. Some bees theorize that crystal exposure can grant magic powers, but testing urines no fruit. A legendary wizard that lived in these lands used to experiment with crystals to learn their magical properties. 
but he suddenly disappeared, and all knowledge of how crystals relate to magic disappeared with him. Rumors have said that he might be living in the far grasslands, but no trace of him has been located. The Mother Crystal Deep underground below the Forsaken Lands, it is said a massive crystal resides. Said crystal might be linked to why Bulgaria is such a haven in this area. The ancient Roach texts suggest it fell from the heavens during the Day of Awakening, piercing the earth. They said the crystal's aura protects Bagaria from the outside world's great perils. Some say that it is tied to goddess Venus, the local deity of the Golden Settlement. Although, personally, I would prefer not to speculate using local folklore. Further study is necessary, but the termites prohibit anyone from digging under the Forsaken Lands. Until relations between the kingdoms improve, reaching the crystal is currently impossible. The Deadlands the, the, the gigantic feral beasts that surround Bagaria. It's uncanny how we've gotten used to them. Eliza the First braved the Deadlands, riddled with those creatures, to ensure our peace. Although Bagaria is protected by the Mother Crystal, I struggle to write when I think of what could happen should that crystal lose its power. The Northern Kingdom Far beyond the Swamplands lay the Northern Kingdom, home to mostly many kind of beetles. They are very traditionalist and hold honor above all else, however many travel to Bagaria to escape the Deadlanders' attacks. The trip to Bagaria is hard enough, but the north houses the swamps filled with more dangerous creatures. To avoid the wasps' hostility, most take the long route around their kingdom. It's the most insane of trips. Truly, the lives of the northerners aren't easy. The Eastern Lands To the far east of Bagaria lay the dead lands we fear so much. Monsters everywhere and a feeling of utter dread. Who knows how, but I braved through the odds. Eventually, I reached the Eastern Kingdom. It is so different compared to Bagaria. It has many exotic fruits and materials that cannot be found in our kingdom. Many of its denizens live in a very closed community that shuns outsiders. The only exception to this seems to be a rare species of bug that resembles fruits. Although friendly, other eastern bugs appear to stay clear of them. Is their smell too sweet? If I don't make it back to Bagaria, I'm glad I got to meet them. The Giants Every day, more ancient artifacts pop up. Given their size and unknown purpose, scholars believe giants roamed these lands. They could have existed all over the known world in giant kingdoms to protect them from the Deadlands. When the Day of Awakening happened, the giants must have vanished. Only their artifacts remain. There's no way to know, is there? Maybe they caused the Awakening themselves. Perhaps they fell to the Deadlands, or created them themselves. Maybe someday they will return to reclaim their old home. Maybe they have left for another world. I'm a bug of facts, but even I'm reduced to daydreaming about their fate. At least we have their monuments, showing us glimpses of their days past. The Day of Reckoning. One moment I'm saying. The following cannot be confirmed, having been retrieved from a book in a roach village's ruins. According to this book written by Roderick the Roach Scholar, what we call the Day of Awakening, the Roach is called the Day of Reckoning. It was an event where they woke up to the world. Ah, I was worried about that. They share our belief that before that day, we were not diff different from the lesser bugs amongst us. A cataclysm happened suddenly, which banished the once fabled giants to another world. Only bugs and some other creatures were left in this world. After said cataclysm, the roaches became sentient, giving birth to civilization. Other books by Roderick mention fires raining down from the sky and destroying the earth. Expeditions have not found craters or traces of such a disaster. Its constant mention in roach texts suggests it was a big part of their culture. Or it could it be a religious creation myth? Roderick, were you lying? How are we supposed to find out? Curses. I'll keep this book hidden away until I can find the truth. 
I'll head into the Eastern Lands once more if I have to. Okay, so hold on, Fuzz, can you hear me now? <laughs> God, please say yes. Ah, uh, this is why I took a recording. <laughs> how quiet that is. Okay, how about now I deleted the source and added it back. Well, I guess I'll watch the VOD back over and see if I can be heard. Worst case scenario, I have a backup recording of reading the books I can upload to YouTube. Which I suppose I'll stop here. Thank you, YouTube, for being here. And see you next week also. <laughs>
By God, if nothing else, that's every book read out. Ayo, Dan. Call that the final save. I just popped my jaw and it hurt really bad. I've got one last thing that I want to show off as like a cool extra thing. Because throughout the game, I got told some codes that I can put in. And I want to show those. Or like how to add them, where to add them. Look, Dan, it really hurt, okay? <laughs> so let's move this right here. So, to be able to put in any of the codes, you have to go to a new file and put it in as your file name. Start with the one that I got from Termicade, which is Hardest. With a little jingle. Shit, how do I leave? I don't think it'll let me leave. Whoops. Well, let's keep adding codes. Uh, one that I didn't get is... More farm. You have to achieve a score of 30 or higher in the Wacko Worm minigame. Uh, the next one is. Frame 1, which you get from Shades after buying out his entire stock of crystal berry metals. The next one is Mystery, which you get after buying out the normal metal shop and talking to a bug next to the shopkeep. Something I never did, but can do. And then the last one that I got, I think, the last one I had access to showing is Ruigi. Which you get from talking to Edel, one of the Adventurer Guild people, after you complete every quest. On to the two that I definitely did not get. One just isn't given, the other. I guess I could have done today, but no. <laughs> is Push Rock. You get this for defeating the secret boss, Tangy Bug. In order to access the secret boss, Tangy Bug, you have to go through the entire Cave of Trials with either three or more Tangy Berries in your inventory, or a Tangy Berry in the fourth slot of your inventory. After the 50th floor, you get a secret boss, the entire thing malfunctions, and you fight a shadow version of Tangerine, the, like, orange, berry, beetle-looking bug. Name the file, ah. Uh. There we go. I had to start it, start it. Cause 
because I didn't see help. Oh god. Well, I'm stuck in this now. Yeah, though, ah. Uh, that's everything I've got for Bug Fables. Showed off the codes. I showed off all the books. I read out all the books. Ah, uh, that blue bug there is Edel, by the way. I don't know. But, my throat's a little tired actually after reading out those books, so I think I'm just going to call it. Thanks for showing up to this, and in spite of the potential flub ups being here, I uh, hope to see you both around, and have a nice day. <laughs>